Gates. Donald John Trump. And no, just to be clear, I, I do not think Donald Trump would win the Speaker of the House race. I do not. The clown show continues in Washington, D.C. as Kevin McCarthy has now lost seven rounds of voting for Speaker. They are now on to the eighth round. Just started. But Matt Gates, he had a plan. In the seventh round of voting, <laughs> he nominated Donald Trump. So I'm going to get to that clip and some of the other stuff going around, including some other reactions from uh, media and various people. But here is the moment that uh, Matt Gates casts, casts his vote for uh, Donald Trump. You can tell he's taking this really seriously. <laughs> these, these lawmakers really there to serve the people. Here is this aspect of the clown show. Gates. Donald John Trump. Trump. Gallagher. So I had this on in the background and I heard Trump. Like, did I hear that right? <laughs> did somebody really nominate Donald Trump? Turns out, yes. So you could even see Marjorie Taylor Greene, who was on McCarthy's side, even she's impressed <laughs> by this, I guess, power play. I don't even know what you call this. Maybe this is an attempt to try and get Trump on their side by nominating him because playing to his ego, to Trump's ego, is the best way to try to get on his side. So, I don't know, maybe, anything's possible. Maybe Trump, all of a sudden tonight, comes out and he's like, you know what, now that I can really see what this, this, these small, the small group of lawmakers, what they're really about, I no longer support McCarthy. Now I support whoever they're going for now. Donald's for speaker, or myself. <laughs> maybe, maybe Trump will run. So, so stupid. This is really just, and again, I've. this is day three now, just to be clear. This is not, again, about policy. So there are about 20 members here, once the voting's all done, 20 Republicans that are anti-McCarthy, and it's not because they disagree on a certain policy they want, they really want McCarthy to push this certain thing. No, it's they just don't want McCarthy. At this point, it's all about personality, it's all about personal branding for these lawmakers. So... And I also think an aspect, they they just want to shut down the government. And they don't care, because why would they care? Anytime Republicans are in control, they don't want to pass anything for people anyways. The only thing they, they end up passing is help for massive corporations. So these lawmakers just don't care either way. So they're, I think they're going to continue blocking progress here in terms of anything happening in Congress as long as they can, to the point where it's very possible that McCarthy and uh, Hakeem Jeffries, Democrat, and of course, McCarthy, uh, Republican, will pick a consensus vote, someone that both sides will support for Speaker, and I guess, essentially give up control of the House. Now, that doesn't mean that Democrats all of a sudden would control the House, because again, the GOP still have the, the vote advantage in the House, but not having McCarthy as speaker and having a consensus vote is a definite loss for McCarthy and the GOP. But first, a couple of reactions. So this made me laugh. Ben Wexler here. I like that Donald Trump is branching out into losing elections he didn't even run in. <laughs> very, very good. And uh, this take here from the Washington Post. I want to get the author's name right here. Uh, Alexandra Petri writes here, honestly, we are a little confused if you're taking this so poorly. This is like electing a bunch of clowns to office and being disappointed when they put on a magnificent clown show for you. <laughs> here is precisely the clown show you ordered. You shouldn't be ashamed. You should be applauding. It is like ordering a decorative salad made entirely from Legos and being mad that you can't eat it. It is like voting for Lauren Boebert and then becoming upset that a legislature that contains her is not productively working for the American people. Point taken. If, I don't know, if it's so, if there's a chance that maybe a Republican voter in one of these 20 members uh, districts that are anti-McCarthy right now, maybe you're angry and you want to see the start. Uh, here's the thing. I don't think these people exist. I, the more I, I, I cover this, 
I really, I tend to think the GOP base is enjoying all of this. It's really just conservative media that is freaking out, but I don't think the base cares. Why would they care? What are they waiting to get done? Because this is what ultimately they are fighting for. This is what the House GOP are fighting for. Their top priority, if they ever get a speaker, protect wealthy tax dodgers. So I touched on this in, I think, my video on Tuesday about what this was all about. Their top priority is to defund the IRS. So the IRS was just uh, just had an, an increase in their funding to specifically target wealthy tax dodgers. That is their new directive with the funding they have. Of course, the GOP now wants to defund the IRS so that they can't focus on wealthy tax dodgers because, of course, many of them and their friends are those wealthy tax dodgers. So this is all just... There's no... Nothing's going to get done regardless because Democrats control the Senate, GOP control the House, but this is the the objective. And this is both, by the way, both sides of this fight here, both sides of the Republican fight. They both agree to this. So again, the fight isn't over policy. Matt Gates isn't anti this. He's pro this. They're all pro this, but they don't care enough to actually start government. Now... Let's check out Charlie Kirk's reaction to Donald Trump, potential Speaker of the House. <laughs> Here he is on uh, his show. Uh, the number, number one email we're getting right now is Donald Trump for Speaker of the House. Uh, he wouldn't win, and he doesn't want it. Because you think 20 Republicans not wanting Kevin McCarthy is decisive? There's probably 120 Republicans that do not want it. And that's another important thing is that, yes, the 20 Freedom Caucus members do have power right now. They are the swing voters. But if this continues to go without taking a good deal, do not be surprised if those 50 to 75 more rhino types start to get very angry that Congress is being just going in that direction, even though that is much more in our philosophically congruent of our worldview, and they start going and caucusing with Democrats. That's not going to happen today, but there are conversations right now to help form a coalition government effectively eliminating the Republican House majority. And no, just to, just to pause there for a second. Charlie Kirk here is trying to soften up his audience because, again, I think he understands. He's closer to the base uh, than I think Fox News generally is. He understands that his supporters, his viewers, like what's going on right now. So he is trying to introduce the idea that, guys, maybe this sucks because it's very possible that Republicans will end up having to work with Democrats to choose a consensus uh, speaker, and that will, I guess, essentially uh, lose the majority for Republicans, even though they still control in terms of the actual voting numbers. To be clear, I, I do not think Donald Trump would win the Speaker of the House race. I do not. There are at least 100 very moderate Republicans that are saying they're only going to vote for McCarthy. But that's why I said yesterday Donald Trump should be there negotiating the deal. I think it's a mistake for Donald Trump not to be in D.C. helping negotiate the deal. He wants to be president in 2024. Help get the impossible deal done. I think it's a missed opportunity. I really. It's very weird to see Charlie Kirk make an accurate point because typically he's going on about some bullshit. He's generated some anger about the left. But when it's time to actually face what your own party is doing, in terms of what what their position is and how they want to achieve power and hold on to power, Charlie Kirk is correct that, yeah, maybe McCarthy should win so that they're able to have power. Now, again, my position, I don't give a shit, but <laughs> when it comes to a Republican, he's right in terms of actually gaining power that, you know, it could be a lot worse here if uh, this path if they continue going down this path. And Donald Trump, an accurate criticism of him here as well, that if McCarthy really supports, or if, if Trump really supports McCarthy, then why isn't Trump down there trying to put some actual in-person pressure on these members? Which I think would have a potential impact. I mean, him putting out stuff on Truth Social, no one cares. But him actually being there in person, I think would have an impact. But of course, Trump doesn't want to do any work. He's not going. 
Trump's not going to go there. He doesn't want to have to do anything. So that's not happening. But Fox and Friends, I just want to end on, on this little Fox and Friends thing here. Because they are also, as most of Fox News' main hosts are, in support of McCarthy, against what is happening right now within the party, within this the vote for the speaker. So Fox and Friends shames 20 Republicans holding up speakership and calls out supporters. You voted for them. Here's the thing. Before I even show you a clip from this piece, they had Boebert on their show back in 2019, speaking to Fox and Friends on Saturday, Lauren Boebert, the woman who confronted Beto O'Rourke. She was not even running for Congress. They're the ones that helped to prop her up, made her famous. Same with Sean Hannity, who had, I may do a separate video on this, Hannity had Lauren Boebert on a show last night, berated her. <laughs> but they propped her up. This is, these are the chickens coming home to roost. You set this up, you did this to yourselves, which is why this has been so fun to watch because they're the ones that are now people at Fox, these hosts and other conservative media. They're the ones that help to uplift these maniacs. And now when the maniacs get out of line, you're all surprised. It's wonderful seeing this party tear itself apart. So here is a piece from their uh, Fox and Friends segment. It'd be interesting to see it where that's not 20 votes or 19 votes. If you go ahead and do that vote at noon and it's down to 10. Uh -huh. After uh, these concessions. They, after these concessions, they go, okay, you know, Chip Roy and company go, you basically did everything we asked. And then there's pressure on the aide to go, listen, what's it going to take? This is really personal. Should you be hurting the country because you don't like Kevin McCarthy for whatever reason? Like Lauren Boebert seems totally without any substance to her objection. Matt Gates said, I think he'd rather vote for Hakeem Jeffries. When you say things like that, you're going to have to maybe move on from so them. So he's not going to be interesting. These same people that propped up both Boebert and Gates and every other lunatic on the right, now all of a sudden so angry that their lunatics won't fall in line. Oh my God. So this is, you know, this is the big story this week. I'm not sure how long I can continue <laughs> covering just this. Other things are going on that I want to cover. So, you know, there may be a little shift tomorrow, but I, I don't know. This has been uh, highly entertaining to see this party rip itself to shreds.